So this problem looks at a situation where you have a painter standing on a plank. So we have a plank of board on two supports. The board's six meters long. The supports are four and a half meters apart from one another. And one and a half meters is hanging off of the end. And the painter's going to walk along to the end of the board and we're wondering how far can he walk before it tips over. So how long can he walk before it tips over? All right, well, what's the rotating object in this case? It would be the plank. So our object of interest is going to be that plank that we're interested in analyzing the torques about it, the potential for rotation. Of course, we don't want it to rotate. We want it to be in a state of static equilibrium. We want to know how far can he get before that whole thing tips over. All right, so if we're going to do a static equilibrium problem. We're certainly going to look at an extended free body diagram. So here's our plank, our extended free body diagram. We want to put all the forces on that. We're told it's a uniformly distributed board. Therefore, the force of gravity is acting at the geometric center. So here's our force of gravity of the plank, which we know is equal to m times g. And we're not given the weight in this problem, so we're going to have to determine it based on the mass. So we have that. That's in the geometric center. The board is interacting with a support, so that support's right here, and it's pushing up on the board. So it's if this is the geometric center, we know it's halfway. The, the uh, support is a little bit further than that. So we have a normal force, we'll call that normal force one, of that particular support pushing up on the board. And we have our painter. He's somewhere over here. We're not exactly sure where, so we'll just draw him somewhere. He's past the support, so he's pushing down. Here's the force of the painter. That's going to equal the weight of the painter, which is equal to the mass of the painter times gravity. And then we have this support. And I want to pause this on that support for just a moment. We're interested in the point at which the board starts to tip. Now, if the board actually tips, is it contacting that last support? It's not. So at the very, very tipping point, it's not contacting it either. So while if he's happy on that board, if it's not at the verge of tipping, we certainly would have an upward force that would be causing a torque on that board. But if we're at the point of tipping, there is no force at that point because it's just coming off. And it's a contact force and it's reactive, so it only has to be there if it needs to be, and it doesn't. So that's it. These are the only forces acting. All right, so we're interested in looking at the rotation of this board. So we have to select a pivot point. Now, we want to determine the radii. That's very specific radius. We do know the radius of the force of gravity if my pivot point was at this end. We would know this radius. We don't know this radius. We also want to think about what we know and what we don't know, what our values to eliminate would be. Is there anything in this problem that we don't know the value of other than the radius? That normal force. We don't know the value of that normal force. So if I were to select to put the pivot point at this location, then it doesn't really matter what that value is because at that pivot point, the normal force is not causing a torque. So let's use that strategy and see where it takes us and see if it works. All right, if this is our pivot point, we then are going to identify each of the forces. So one, two, and three. Oh, I should have made that a different color. Let's do this. Make that orange since it's written in orange. There are only three forces acting on the board. And we will look at the net torque. So I'll use my yellow. So the sum of the torques, we know we're going to equal zero. So we have torque one torque 2, and torque 3. Torque 1, force 1, times the radius 1, times the sine of the angle 1. All right, my force 1 is the force of gravity on that board, so of the board. So force of gravity of the board times the radius. All right, so we need to figure out the radius. 
That's the radius from the pivot point let's see, let me use green, to the force. So this is radius 1. Now, if the board, we know this pivot point is located 4.5 meters from the end of the board. That's given in the problem. And we know that the force of gravity acts at the geometric center, so that's 3 meters, since the board is 3 meters long. So the distance between the force of gravity and the pivot point is 1.5 meters. So we have 4.5 meters to the pivot point and 3 meters to here, so we have 1.5 meters of radius. So this is times 1.5 meters. Now we need to determine the sine of the angle. We extend our radius curve to the force. So this is our angle. That's 90 degrees, but it's in the counterclockwise direction, so it is positive 90 degrees. All right, let's just go through and finish that torque. We have the force of gravity, so we have 30 times 9.8 times 1.5 times the sine of 90, which is 1. So we get 441 newton meters. We expect it to be positive because this would rotate the object in the counterclockwise direction. All right, force number two. Force number two is our painter. So that's the force two times the radius two times the sine of the angle two. The force of two is the weight of the painter times its radius. Well, that's from the pivot point to the painter. We have no idea what that is. In fact, that's what we're interested in. Times the sine of the angle. So we extend the radius curl in the direction of the force. It's 90 degrees, but it's negative 90. We know the weight of that painter to be 70 times 9.8. We do not know the radius, but the sine of negative 90 is going to give me a negative 1, and we get minus 686 times the radius, whatever that may be, Newton meters. All right, force number three. Well, that is our normal force, one. So force three times radius three times the sine of the angle three. That's our normal force, but it's at a radius of zero, so we can stop right there. All right. We add these torques up. We know that the sum of the torques are equal to zero. We have 441 minus 686 times the radius equals zero, and we can simply solve for the radius. So our radius is 441 divided by 686. Oops. We get our radius equal to 0 0.64 meters from the pivot point which is the second support. So make sure you recognize what that radius really is representing. All right, so you have at least a half a meter of safety, a little bit more, another tenth, another ten centimeters, and that painter won't start tipping. Okay, good job.